And if you would remain standing as I read just a short passage from John chapter 7. John chapter 7, beginning at verse 14. Not until halfway through the feast did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having studied? Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself. But he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false in him. We'll stop there. Thank you. You may be seated. Teach us your way, Lord. We give you our attention. May your Holy Spirit open our minds and our hearts. Teach us, Lord, what you want us to know. And lead us as we respond to the truth we come to understand. In Jesus' name. Jesus is perceived differently by different people. If you have any doubt about that, go to any bookstore and look at the number of books of people who have written books about who was Jesus. For a few moments this morning, I want us to think about how people in Jesus' day perceived him. The people who saw him up close and personal. The people who listened to him. The people who observed him while he was here on earth. Who did they think he was? You remember Jesus met a Samaritan woman at a well. And he began engaging her in conversation. And she responded by saying this, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. When the people on Palm Sunday were waving their palm branches and proclaiming their hosannas as Jesus entered Jerusalem, some of the chief priests asked the people, who is this that's riding in on this donkey? And they replied, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus one time asked his disciples directly, who do people say that I am? And you remember their response? Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And we read in the Gospels concerning the Jewish leaders, they looked for a way to arrest Jesus But they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. Why did they think that? Why did they see and hear Jesus and believe that he was a prophet? And were they correct in that assessment? Even Jesus, you recall, when he was rejected in Nazareth, his hometown, said, of himself, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town and in his own house. Jesus himself identifies himself as a prophet. Thousands of years earlier, God, through Moses, told the people that someday there was going to come a great prophet. This is what he says. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, like Moses, from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. And the interesting thing is that verse, if we have to ask, well, who's the identity of this coming prophet, 
is answered in the New Testament. For Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, in Acts 3.22, categorically states that this prophet that was prophesied back in Moses' day is indeed Jesus. So when the people thought that Jesus was a prophet, were they right? Yes, they were right to a point. This morning we're going to look at Jesus' role or function as a prophet. But as we do, there is a crucial truth that I must make sure you understand. Please don't miss this. Jesus was a prophet, but he was more than a prophet. Make sure we remember that when we're talking about his prophetic role. Jesus was the eternal second person of the Trinity, come in human flesh, God in the form of man, the only begotten Son of the Father. He's presented in Scripture as being our creator and our sustainer and the Savior of the world. Last week, we spent our entire time talking about Jesus as King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus is a prophet, but he is more than a prophet. And we must make sure we understand the distinction. We're not just talking about one prophet and a whole line of them equal to all of the rest. Jesus acted as a prophet, but he is our Savior. And we might say he's not just a prophet, he's the prophet. What do prophets do? How, in, in what sense was Jesus a prophet? How did he function in that role? Well, if you look up prophet in the dictionary, as I did, you will find that it says, a person who speaks for God. And actually, that's a very good definition. The actual word prophet etymologically means speaking for the Bible presents a prophet as somebody who is called of God to deliver God's message to the people in his or her time. Therefore, you, the, the phrase that you often hear from a prophet is, thus says the Lord. Because a prophet's job was to deliver God's word, to deliver God's message to the people at that time. The prophet was not to give his own interpretation. The prophet was simply to give God's word as God gave it to him or her to the people. It's no small matter to be a prophet because to claim that you're a prophet means that you are claiming to speak the very words of God. And therefore, is it any wonder that we have so many references in the Bible and warnings and condemnations of false prophets? Because it's blasphemy to say that you're speaking for God but not speak for God. It's blasphemy to say you are going to deliver the message from God and then deliver some other message. So being a prophet was a pretty serious matter. Prophets were called by God for that particular purpose. If you read the Old Testament account, you realize that a lot of the prophets, we'd have to say, were pretty reluctant. They were called of God, and they realized the significance of what they were being called to do. Now, notice what Jesus says about himself. In this regard, a prophet is one who speaks the words that God gives him. In the passage we read in John 7, Jesus says, My teaching is not my own, it comes from the one who sent me. Sounds like a prophet to me. 
Or in John 8, verse 28, he said, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. In John 12, he says, For I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. And if that isn't enough, in John 14, he, write, he says, He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, I'm speaking God's words. I am acting as a prophet. If you study prophetic teaching in the Bible, you, you see that there are, there are certain elements within prophetic teaching. Usually when I, we talk about prophet or prophecy, what do we think of? Oh, we're foretelling future. And that's part of it. And Jesus certainly spoke of what was going to be happening in the future. But it's only part of what prophets did. Prophets, more often than not, were not so much foretellers, but forth-tellers. They gave admonitions and teaching to the people of their day, oftentimes warning them that if they did not mend their ways, if they would not stop sinning in God's sight, there would be difficulty as a result. If you read the teaching of Jesus, you see it's full of warnings and admonitions and instruction of how to live. And it also calls to mind what is going to happen in the future. All of this is just simply to say that Jesus meets all the criteria of being a prophet. No wonder the people of his day perceived him as such. And Jesus does and says nothing to dissuade our understanding of that. So Jesus very much fits into the prophetic mold. Now, what is it that makes Jesus the prophet? Interestingly enough, he's the only one who can say that he was not just a man, a human being, speaking for God. But he was God speaking for God. And that puts him on a totally different level. John 1, 18, we read, No one has ever seen God. But the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Jesus comes and reveals God to us as a prophet. You notice Jesus never appears to say, for thus says the Lord, before he says anything. Because it would be redundant. If he is God, then everything he says is from God. His most often used introduction is, Truly, truly, I say unto you, or those of you who like the King James, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. He never had to say, now, listen now, this is from God. Because he was God. And everything he said was from God. So he would introduce what he would say by saying, Truly, truly, I say, I say unto you, claiming authority. All right, so Jesus is a prophet. Hopefully I've made my case. So what? What does it matter? Must have been interesting to be back then and to hear him, but why does that have any relevance for us today? Why should we care? Why should that be important for us to consider? Well, for one very, very important reason. 
If Jesus is a prophet, then his words, his teaching, have authority. They have authority. And if Jesus' teaching has the authority of God, then his teaching is not optional. They're the very words of God. They're not to be disputed. They're not to be rejected. They're not to be questioned. No, they are to be heeded. They are to be followed. Jesus, as the prophet, has given us God's very word. What are we to do with God's word? God's word are, is authoritative, carries the authority of God himself. And so it's to be heeded and followed. Sometimes it seems like we do far more discussion of his teaching than we do actual following of it. His teaching becomes more of an academic exercise instead of a pattern for how we're actually going to live our lives. His teaching isn't just for intellectual curiosity. His teaching is to instruct us how to live so that when he says something, we need to heed it. For instance, when he says... You must be born again. Does he mean it? Does God mean it? Any wiggle room in there? No. You must be born again. That's not some man's opinion. That's not somebody's interpretation. That is prophecy from the prophet speaking the word of God. You must be born again. Or how about this? Love your enemies. Do good to those who curse you. I don't like that one. We'll just leave that one aside. I like the born again one. I'll, I'll take that, but not this one. If Jesus is the prophet, then we don't have that option, do we? To pick and choose which ones of his statements we like and which ones we don't, and follow the ones we like and don't follow the ones we don't. How about when he says something like this, if anyone be my disciple, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Again, not optional. What about when he says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Does he mean it? Of course he does. We are allowed to do that, to come to Christ and receive rest. And I could go on and on and on with other teachings that we find in the scriptures from Christ. It's not just advice. It's not just good ideas. It's not just some principles that we can weigh and set aside or, or, or look at in relation to maybe other teachers or so forth. The key word here is authority. Jesus as prophet, his words matter. And they should matter more than any other words ever spoken. Last week, we looked at Jesus and in his role as our king. And we said the response, therefore, when we recognize Jesus as our king, the response should be obedience and worship and service. As we consider Jesus as our prophet, what is the proper response? First of all, listening. Listening. Do you know what Jesus said? 
thankfully, we have a way of knowing exactly what he said. Right in this book. It's been preserved for us through the years. So our first response is to listen to the Jesus, the prophet. The second would be to take heed, take it seriously, recognizing that it comes from God himself. And the third response is doing it, acting upon it. It's not enough just to know it. It's not enough just to be able to intellectually say, well, I agree with it. Great. But do you employ it in your lives? Do you live accordingly to the teaching of Jesus? Next week, we're going to look at Jesus in another one of his roles, and that is his role as priest. He's prophet, priest, and king, according to the great confessions. But for today, let's just think about him as prophet. Are we living according to his word? Do we know what his word is? Do we give it first place, highest place in our lives? We have no excuse. We have it right here. It's available to us. And God's Holy Spirit will help us as to we understand it more fully and will help us to apply it in our lives. So as you think about Jesus and all the many roles and functions and ways that we might come to understand him, I suggest to you to give some thought to him as our prophet. How will we respond? Heavenly Father, thank you that you have not left us adrift, not knowing what your word is, not knowing how it is that you would have us to live. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus came to live and die and be raised again and be our Savior, but also to be our teacher. Thank you, Lord, that you have preserved this teaching over the centuries. Thank you, Lord, that we know precisely what Jesus the prophet said. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us, give us your Holy Spirit's understanding so that we might not only understand but apply his authoritative teaching in our lives today and always. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us of this important function of Christ and what our response should be. We pray in Jesus' name.